you know, congratulations to Maris. They played uh, very well, shot the ball well, played very, um, you know, very sound defensively, and uh, you know, and beat us in, in in the parts of the game that were that were so critical. Um, uh, I think that you know, obviously, so early in the season, um, you know, we need to we need to get better at a at a at a few things, um, and hopefully, this will be something that jump starts us to to. Um, to doing so. Uh, so congrats to them, and we're looking forward to Wednesday night. Coach, did you find significant fault with Richmond's defense, or that was just great shooting uh, Red Foxes? Well, yeah, sometimes it's great shooting, John, but that, you know, when you, when you, when the first few are easier, then you develop a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, I think after, uh, after the first half, I think, um, you know, Price didn't make, did he make another three maybe in the second half? Um, so um, you know, so we were trying to make adjustments, but when they found when they found a rhythm, I actually thought in the first half defensively, you know, they had some they had some um, challenging possessions that we were really really aggressive, and uh, and then if they would um, and they made a three at the buzzer was a good play, or, or we, they'd miss and get a rebound and kick it out. So I just feel like they felt a little bit too comfortable, and that's something that we can that we can work on and improve upon. Do you speak to BRS? Yeah, yeah, he, I think he's really going to be a, be a great help to us. You know, he's so fast and explosive. Um, you know, he, he's you know still uh, learning his way a little bit, but uh, he's a really competitive guy. He's very fast and explosive, um, and he, I think he'll do a lot of really really good things for us. And you know, he's also a pleasure to be around in terms of of how he attacks every day, and um, you know how much he wants to be good. Despite the loss, great night for Delani. Can you just sort of speak about his performance, his attacking to the basket? Yeah, I thought D'Lo was was really good, and we didn't give him enough support. And and what's what's hard about that is, um, you know, we need to give him more and more support because he has so many things to worry about. You know, he's a leader. He's one of our best defensive players. He's organizing our team, uh, and so when he also has to. When he's also asked to be so aggressive, that that's that's a little bit too much. So we need we need uh, everyone to take some of that that responsibility from him. Other guards, centers, everybody, just to take some of that responsibility from him, so that he can be free to do all those things that he's good at. Chris, the technical fouls certainly haven't been a original problem over the years, especially in key moments. Uh, do you share your thoughts on AP's issue there? Yeah, it's unacceptable. You know there. Uh, at that point in the game, um, you know that there is a that that exists in basketball. You know when guys block shots and there's talking and things like that, um, and generally it's fine at the at the playground or even you know even sometimes in games. But at that critical at that critical stage, it can't happen. It's unacceptable, and uh, we spoke to him about it in the game and after the game, and I'm sure we'll talk again about it. When you think about the defense, they're really good shooting by the Red Foxes are really. Delinquent defense by Richmond in some cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that, that's pretty much the best way to, to say it. You know, pretty delinquent defense. You know, um, tip your hat. I mean, they hit 14 threes, but I feel like it, there was definitely something we could have did to at least cut that number a half. I know um, what I want to say, Price hit five in the first half, and that was, that was really big for them. And... We tried different things to switch up, but could never really get on the same page defensively, and I think that's where we really lost the game. It looked as though you tried to energize a little bit by putting some pressure on them in the first half. Did that have the effect you wanted? Because you did seem to serve your head for a bit. Um, I just feel like our, our offense wasn't moving like it, like it should have. So in order to get a quick burst and, you know, some easy easy points to get us back into offense, I was kind of putting the pressure on them, see if we get to the line, stop the clock, you know, let everyone just breathe and try to keep playing. But um, I just feel like it, it, at that moment in the game, a, a different type of aggression needed to be asserted as I felt like they, they won the battle, you know, um, we were in a fight, but they won the battle. The 50-50 balls, the offensive rebounds, the basketball god plays going their way because of those. Um, it just, it just, they had our number tonight, and we had ways to stop it, but we, we couldn't execute all the way through. Thank you. As captain of the team, what do you sort of tell your guys as you guys move forward in your non-conference schedule? Um, stove is hot. 
you know, um, new guys, young guys, you know, may not understand how, you know, you may you may look at the name and the conference and you think, okay, it's just an easy night, but it, it's not that case. Even with Mount Olive, you know, um, you got to respect the game of basketball, and that starts with respecting your opponent. And um, it's a long season, you know. Of course, disappointed. You don't want to lose, especially at home, especially on a night like a banner reveal. You don't you don't want to lose, especially in that manner. But um, it's not it's not time to drop our heads and start sulking. You know, we're, we're two games in. We got at least 30 left. You know, so it's about staying on the same page, staying together, and responding to this.